And welcome back to a brand new episode of the Development Tours, an exclusive series on the Property by Kazi YouTube. I'm Kaz and today I'm joined by David. How you doing, you okay? Good man. Good, so David is taking us around his brand new conversion. So this is Waterbridge Court. Now it was previously a pub, it was then offices, but it's now being converted into nine brand new self-contained units. And I think the makeup of those is one two beds and eight one beds. That's right. And you didn't go for conventional planning. Mm -hmm. So how, how about, how did you, what was the planning process like for these? So we did two permitted development applications. Mm -hmm. One for the uppers, the first and second floor, for the eight up there. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time actually it was seven through PD. Mm -hmm. And then one for the ground floor. Uh, we did it separately. So in, they didn't really like the ground floor. So, so that it didn't get knocked all back altogether. On from our conversations, you've sent a lot of letters yeah. and you've had a lot of conversations with landlords that maybe have got you to do full quotes, full appraisals and wasted your time. But I think that first one was your proof of concept mm -hmm. and you've now gone on to do this massive deal, Heart of Dartford, great area. We've got the hill hub round the corner that we know Rehoboth Property are working on. So should we go inside and see what you're doing? Let's do it. Let's do it. So we spoke outside and you said you're around eight weeks away from completion, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, and I can see, obviously, I've, you've, you've taken me for a quick walk around and I can see that, you know, loads of progress has been done, more so upstairs and working down. How long have you actually been working on this project? So we've been on site for four months in total. So we were in, on site the first week of January. Um, and most of January was strip out. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Yeah, over the course of the last four months, then we've done first fix and we're now in, in the ground floor flat. Here's the last one to be plastered. Mm -hmm. so that's done. And then um, elsewhere, the miscoat's going on and second fix joinery started. So we're on track. Yeah. From, you know, just looking around and exploring the site as I do as the, the nosy host. Um, one thing I noticed that as a project of this size, people would think, you know, four months, that sounds crazy in terms of time scale and yet where you currently are. But when we sort of delved into it, in terms of structural alterations, you had, I think it was one, one steel. Um, you know, you, you pretty much worked with the existing structure of the building. You benefited from inheriting a lift, albeit it had to be serviced and, and some maintenance, but a lot of it was internal, you know, internal repairs, reconfiguration and finishing as opposed to structural, which saved a massive amount of time. And it's obviously the credit to the type of deal that you were able to source. Uh, yeah, it was it, it, because it's nine units and we're over three floors. It's actually a really good size. Trades can follow on from others, so they can be the, the electricians who are finishing first fixing, mm -hmm. and then the boarders will board it, and then the plasters follow them, and the decorators follow them, and they can all move around different flats. Which means that it's four, only been in four months so far, but it's moved pretty quickly. I think we're in the ground floor flat, which I love. You know, this is the only two bed. You explained to me it's going to have the decking outside, so direct outside space. Um, should we go and see a couple of the other units? Yeah. So we are now in one of the eight one bedroom flats. They've all got a really, you know, similar feel, really nice look. Um, I love the fact that you know you've maintained the sash windows, probably not by choice, but yeah, the fact that they are maintained and they are in place makes it look really nice and in keeping with the local area. How else have you managed to sort of manage your builds to keep to this really strict time frame that you've managed to achieve? Yeah, so we've got um, a great team of trades, mm -hmm. firstly, um, and it's they've worked really well together, but it's beholden on me to supply all the second fix items. So all the kitchens and bathrooms and tiles are all client supply, which is me. And I wanted to do that to, to give me a firm grip on costs as we, as we went through the project. Um, but yeah, by getting the, so much is in the planning, these kitchens were the first draft of them was through before we started on site. Um, and yeah, so many other things were cleared like with building control before we started on site. And because we've, because a six month build is so quick, as you know, then you easily, they're asking you for second fix items yeah. week four. Yeah. Um, like what, what is this gonna be? Cause they need to know how they're gonna fix it. So yeah, it's, it's all in the planning is the truth. Yeah. And then keeping the same 
kitchens and bathrooms throughout everywhere, same flooring everywhere, um, same tiles everywhere. Every bathroom is a carbon copy. That's good. It's looking nice. I like, you know, we spoke earlier about the feel and the finish that you're going for. So you've gone for like the accents of black in the handles, um, as well as in some of the lighting and the second fix electrics. Kitchen, you've got the brass, and I think you mentioned you're gonna have obviously the brick finish, brick slip pillars mm -hmm. throughout the building, which I think is nice for a conversion. There's so many new build properties and larger, like larger properties, that the properties where you can have a little bit more character, you know, have that industrial feel, so they really feel like a conversion, it differentiates them from you know the, the mass market, which I think is great. It's going to really help them to sell. Nice, nice. They're not mechanical, though, are they? No. <laughs> How are they opening that? Just with hope. <laughs> nope. Nah, I mean. Extra. That was an extra, extra four hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but by the time you times it by. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all these things, you're like, you think, oh, that's that's only a few hundred quid. Like, the, the, the AO were like, oh, those those Bosch hobs are out of stock, but you can get these. It's only two hundred quid more. I was like, that's two thousand pounds more though. Mm. It's two thousand pounds. It's um, weird. It's weird, and it's but it is. It's kind of when do you stop? Yeah. Because there's always an up, up. There's there's always, there's always you've one got one. to think ceiling price and you've got to think, but if you're already at the ceiling, you already know you've done a good standard, then you kind of think it would be great to have, you know, underfloor heating, would love that. It would be great to have electric Veluxes, would love that. And like you said, oh, slightly better. Should we go to for AEG rather than X? But at a certain point, it's, it's pound for pound value. Yeah. And what's it going to get? And, and I, I know we've, for a one bed, these, we're marketing these at 250, mm -hmm. basically for one bed, pretty much give or take one, some a bit more. There will be, there'll be, that's the ceiling value for Dartford. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna put in, you know, everything you would put in, you could put in, as you say, there's a, there's a limit. I like the feel, I like the lights, you know me, if, if you've watched any of my channel before and you haven't heard me say natural light, then you don't really watch this channel. But I just wonder, are the profits gonna be as high as these ceilings? What, what are the numbers like? So you, the acquisition cost of the property was? 850. 850, and your stamp duty? Didn't have stamp duty because uh, my joint venture partner on this is the building owner. Okay, nice. Which came from a direct vendor letter. One of one of one? One of, <laughs> one, of, one of many. One of many direct to vendor letters, which shows you that you do just have to keep going. It's not a case of shiny penny syndrome, everyday new strategy. Find something, perfect it, and results will come. So we've got purchase price or acquisition cost of 850, no stamp due. What about your bill cost for these nine units? We're all in with professional fees for about 750. Okay. And cost of finance? Uh, roughly speaking, cost of finance plus other costs, about 200 grand. About 200 grand. And your GDV? Uh, 2.45 million. 2.45, because I actually forgot to mention, so we've spoken about all of the residential units, but there's also the bonus of the commercial unit, and you also retain the basement as well, which, mm -hmm. is, which is great. And commercial units can be great for just income and additional expenses, which is amazing. So what do you think your on-target profits would be for this build? It um, should be between uh, 6.25 to 6.50. Yeah, I don't think I can reach those. That's, that's, that's a pretty high, pretty high number. And over what time? Over... If we've exited fully mm -hmm. um, by February 23, that'll be a two year time. Okay. But, that's, but that'll only be a year since we started on site. Okay. Um, that's because the building was tenanted and uh, we had to wait for those tenants to leave after signing for the deal. Very nice, but all in all, a very, very juicy deal. A deal that I'm sure all of us would love to do. But sometimes, homing a craft and becoming really good at a specific thing 
can allow you to excel in, in your field, which you've done, which is, which is amazing. Yeah, thanks, man. You know, and this is something that, again, I'm just talking, like, I only joined Instagram two years ago and only set up the Property by Kazi page and only got to start having these conversations, but I'm seeing the growth and the progression. That's one great thing that we're building as this community of property lovers, property developers. You know we're back each and every week with another episode. So if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe, get your notifications turned on because then you can find out when we come back to see if he really hits those GDVs, if the flat looks amazing, and potentially there might even be, you know, coffee shop downstairs, might be, I don't know what's gonna be downstairs, but it could be anything and we could be having a drink or a bite to eat. So come and join us then.